Howdy folks, doing a little DIY project today to correct for some omissions by the KSGER Chinesium Factoria, which I had pointed out in the review I just did on this thing a few days back. I'll link to it below in the description. The big one, of course, was adding a GX16 8-pin connector to it so we can unplug or disconnect the heat gun from the station itself. And in the process of going through this, I found two other things that I'm going to be doing to it. The board itself, you don't have to take this out to do this, you just have to take the faceplate off. Uh, really impressed with the board. Just wanted to mention one correction in the review. I said this is probably the switching MOSFET. No, not a chance, partner. It's actually back here on the back side. This is a very different board, obviously, than the T12 soldering station board. It's uh, got quite a bit going on in the back as well. And there is our switch right there. This is one of these tiny switch threes. It's not only a MOSFET, uh, it's got an oscillator in it. Uh, you can limit the current through it as well. And it's got uh, thermal protection. So that's the uh, switching device for the transformer. Lots of nice isolation slotting in here. Looking at it real quick. A very nice quality Texas Instruments uh, transistor array there so they're not cheaping out on components nice to see now the first process of doing this is determining which wires go to which pinouts on your connector now you don't have to follow this at all main thing is you've got the same color wires going into the female end and corresponding to the male end that's going out to the gun so you can do this any way you want but if you want to follow what I'm doing I've actually got this up on the monitor right now. Let's just take a peek at that. That's where I got this from online. In fact, I'll, I'll get a photo of this and I'll fire it up on the video right now and you can pause it. So I've got the red wire going to pin 1 and that is our heater line voltage neutral. Black wire is going to pin 2, heater line voltage load. White wire is going to pin 3, that's the ground. Brown wire is going to pin 4, that's the fan positive. Uh, blue wire is going to pin 5, fan negative. Orange wire is going to pin 6, that's the temp sensor for the heater element up in the ceramic heater. Uh, green wire is going to pin 7, which is the magnetic reed switch. And the yellow wire is going to the center pin 8, which is the NTC thermistor up in the gun handle. The other two things we're going to be doing here, uh, the board, uh, this is the it's really easy to take out. It's mounted on these little brass standoffs. If you did want to take yours out, again, you don't have to. You can just unscrew the four hex screws at the front and take the whole plate off. We're going to have to take uh, these off because we're probably going to have to drill a bigger hole here for the GX16. But in taking this off, I found a problem. It's a pretty big one. This is just anecdotal to my unit. But my guess is they're probably all like this, so you may want to check yours because it's a pretty big deal. Uh, here's the ground wire that goes to the board, which of course is soldered to the connector housing on the ground pin. And I just figured, well, one of these one of these uh, holes will have will have a ground plane on the back, and that's what would ground the actual metal housing as well. Not the case. This board is actually floating. There's no conductivity on any of these mounting pads that go on the brass standoffs. So this, the case, is actually not earth ground. So the second thing I'm going, the second mod I'm going to be doing to this is making sure this is also earth ground. There's a number of ways you could do it. You could uh, put a small washer on this and connect it to the ground plane right beside it. So the board is actually going to be grounding out the case through the standoff. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to solder a wire from the brass standoff here up to the ground pin on the connector housing. It's going to be that simple. And the other thing that I'm going to do is put a small capacitor on the fan circuit. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to do it inside the gun or right at the gun input output here, which is this plug. When the fan is running at low speeds, it's very uh, pulsy. I don't know if that's the correct word, but you can you can tell it's being switched on and off real fast by the little MOSFET that's controlling it. And by putting a cap in there, it just smooths it out. And that actually, 
Uh, if we go back to our schematic here, they're showing a 47 microfarad across the motor, an electrolytic cap. I've played with this now a bit. I found 47 was too much. It was just storing too much voltage and the fan was running too high. You couldn't turn the speed down as much. I'm going to be putting in a 10 microfarad electrolytic cap. This one's rated at 50 volts. Uh, it doesn't have to be that high. Uh, the fan's getting 25 volts. So as long as it's a 25 volt or higher uh, capacitor, you'd be fine. You know, a capacitor is just a kind of like a pressure, pressure tank for voltage, right? I'm just going to cut about here, leaving, what is that, about an inch of wire left coming out of the cable before the insulation starts. And I'm going to take the plate off. These use a uh, 2.5 millimeter hex. Already got the top two, of course, out. Now I want to take the display off because we're going to be drilling this, drilling a bigger hole in here. Or grinding a bigger hole or filing a bigger hole however you want to do it so just pull the knob off just got a quarter inch spline shaft and there's a 10 millimeter nut on here and then the whole display comes off put that washer back on and that nut so we don't lose them needle nosies there we go and out she comes yeah now I'm actually going to cut that out. I don't like that, especially with, you know, we've got 120 volt line voltage coming through these, well, coming through the black one and just being pinched in with all the low voltage. Yeah, I don't like that. So I am going to cut this right off and we'll restrip it. This recess in here isn't quite wide enough for the big ring nut that goes on the back of the GX16. The GX16 at least will fit in far enough that we'll just be able to get this nut on the back of it. The GX16 basically means the width of the body is 16 millimeters. Let's just confirm that. So, yeah, it's a little bit smaller. So, 15.5, that's the size we're going to have to make our hole. And like I said, you could use anything. You could use a Dremel with a, with a sanding drum. Sanding drum seems to work best on aluminum. It doesn't clog. You could use a, just a round file. I'm going to try a stepped drill bit. Uh, you could do this with a hand drill too, probably, but uh, I've got the press. So I just made sure to tape over the display just in case I screw something up and uh, scratch the display hole. Oh, it's looking weird now. Perfect. Pretty clean on the back. Well, let's see if it fits. Time to solder up our connector as per our diagram here. So, first thing I'm going to do is strip all the wires and tin the ends. Going to put heat shrink over all the wires so after they're soldered on to the connector pins we can heat shrink them all to insulate them. Pre tinning all the pins. The back of the connector is numbered one through eight just like on our diagram and we're just going to follow around the pins soldering the corresponding color wire to the right color pin starting with number one one of the things I use my hot air rework for the most is for shrink tube work and hopefully you can hear just how loud my AOU pump version is. It's a big reason why I wanted one of these because they are so quiet. And 
luckily, plugs are small enough to fit through the hole. So I'm going to put the nut on. Ooh, there's a question. Will the nut? Yep. There we go. In. Made sure the orientation pin or tab is at the top and snugged it down nice and tight and I used uh, blue Loctite around the threads just so it will never come loose. Now we just have to do the exact same thing for the male end. It's a little trickier because the pins are closer together uh, and one thing to be mindful of on these when you're doing the male end these are numbered too but they're not uh, they're not like the female end where it was one, two, three, four, because this is essentially a mirror image going in this way. So number one pin is actually here. So that will be our red wire going to our gun. And if we follow it over, see there's our red there. So we've got pin one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and of course eight is still in the middle. So yeah, doing this, doing the male side is a lot harder. You've got very short working distance here. Um, because there's not, and this is fit on, there's a little screw that holds this housing to the insulated part of the connector. And as you can see, you have to keep these wires short so the pinch clamp will pinch the outer sheathing of the cable. And whatever you do, make sure that you put this on. I don't know how many times I have done GX connector projects and I get this soldered on and I haven't put the, the housing end on and if you've got something on the other end that you can't slide the housing over in this case the heat gun you have to take it all off and restart again and it's a real pain in the ass and make sure when this is plugged in you just double check that every color wire on this side is going to the corresponding wire on the other side another little tip here this GX16 connector even when the clamp is on, it's not, it's not going to completely clamp the wire. So what I'm going to do is I've just put some heat shrink over here. Heat shrink it on, and then there will be a little bit of extra thickness where this wire comes out, and the clamp will grab it better. Soldered the ground onto the one brass standoff, and to the ground pin on the connector input. While you're back here, good idea just to double check, make sure their soldering work isn't too bad. It's pretty decent. When you put the circuit board back in for the display, just make sure it's level. There's a little bit of wiggle room in there and you don't want it crooked. I'll fire the knob back on. And there's the kind of room we've got at the back. I'm just going to fit it back into here as you can see we've got just enough room I think we got our beat I want to show how it's tight in there but it does fit just yeah, that's what we're looking at at the front let's turn this thing on so you'll notice when it's not plugged in just like the T12 soldering station it airs and there's no electric output on any of these pins so you don't have to worry about lighting yourself up uh, as far as line voltage coming through here, only when we plug in the unit will it will that air go off. Push the button. Now she's running. So everything's working good there. Just holding it, holding the probe to our ground. Touch the case here on a bare spot. Got continuity there. The connector's grounded. Now the only other thing I wanted to show you is this little capacitor if you decided you wanted to do this. I'm just going to turn the uh, unit on here and I'm going to go slow, the slowest speed. Okay, so I don't know if you can hear that. It's very little air coming out it's kind of grindy sounding though, right? It's just because of the slow pulse rate from the MOSFET. So if we put a cap in, again this is a 50 volt 
10 microfarad. Make sure you get the negative and the positive. So here's to our fan. The blue is the negative, the brown is the positive. And you'll hear the difference, hopefully. So not as... has nothing to do with the high speed. It makes no difference when the cap is in there. But on the low speed, take the cap out. So hopefully you can hear that. The cap does make it speed up a little bit, but you can experiment. Like I said, the 10 seems to be okay. That's what I think I'm going to use. The 40 recommended 47 from that schematic I found online just ran ran it too quick. It was just storing too much voltage for the fan. And your call if you want to put it in the circuit board under underneath that circuit board. I'm just going to solder mine onto the bottom of the board on the fan output. Completely done. Uh, just wire tied the wires again. There's the little electrolytic. 10 microfarad cap, just soldered it uh, direct onto the pins underneath the board. And there's the slowest speed. Right up to highest. So it's a little, little smoother now. So that's pretty much it. Super fun little project if you want to uh, mod your KSGER SMD hot air rework station a little bit with the GX. 16 8 pin plug and putting a ground proper ground so the case is ground also with the case being ground your connector is ground and the little cap fun little project cheers folks have a good one